and the award for the worst scene in the entire series goes to Thrandaddy tells Legolas his mother loves him. I've spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to figure out this scene. First of all, why is Thranduil speaking in riddles? What is his name? He is known in the wild as Strider. His true name you must discover for yourself. Why can't he just say, go find Aragorn? And why even shove yet another reference to the Fellowship here? Who cares if Legolas and Aragorn met before the Council of Elrond? It just sounds like they're setting up a sequel that we'll never get to see. Oh god, please, please don't make another sequel. Thranduil's not even someone who thinks highly of other species, so why is he even talking so grandly about the destiny of some man? He just sounds like he's a quest giver in an RPG. His true name, you must discover for yourself. And then this. Your mother loved you. What? Was that the reason Legolas has been so melancholy this whole series? Why? Why make his story about his dead mom when there's still so much left unexplored with Tauriel? And why did Thranduil's heart suddenly grow three sizes anyway? Did it just take Tauriel saying, There's no love in you to suddenly transform him into a decent guy? Not buying it. Actually, you know what? Have a dad, boys and girls. Have a dad. We need to talk about Legolas. I don't understand why people find Legolas interesting. Like, I get that he's cool and it's fun to watch him shoot arrows and skateboard and murder innocent elephants. But what's his actual character? This is his fifth outing in Middle Earth, and I still don't know Bombadil about him other than he started as sort of a racist and has a few daddy issues. His scenes are the most lifeless bores in the series, and not just because we know he survives, but because he looks completely disinterested the entire time and literally has nothing to fight for. This becomes patently absurd when he's fucking double jumping up falling rocks in his battle against this nothing of a villain. It's like the battle of who can be less interesting, especially when the movie movie treats this with the same weight as Thorin versus Azog. Thorin has a reason to want to kill Azog. It's not a particularly deep reason, but at least it's a reason. But Legolas and Bolg? These guys have literally no history at all. Yet for some bizarre reason, the film cuts away from the climactic Azog battle to show us more of Bolg's Bolg. I mean, just look at this. We get a distant shot of Azog standing in the fog on the frozen plateau. The music gets all quiet to let us know this is going to be intense. Thorin approaches him slowly, ready to take his revenge. The music comes back in beats. A horn is rung like a bell in a boxing match saying, game on. The music goes dead quiet and all we can hear is the sound of Azog's weapon dragging across the ice and the chain swinging through the air. Finally, a scene with tension. You're ready for Thorin to kill this prick and then boom, back to Bolg and Legolas. Why? Why movie? Can we just stick with the main story for two seconds without cutting back to Orlando Bloom's face? Oh, right, I forgot. But really, when the rumors first broke that Orlando Bloom would have a cameo in The Hobbit, he was reportedly getting paid $1 million for two minutes of screen time. If only that turned out true. Instead, he is shoved into every possible scene, even though he has almost no motivation. His two fights with Bolg alone run almost four minutes. Four whole minutes of just utter nonsense. All I can say is thank God Viggo Mortensen had enough of a spine to say fuck no. But the one potential benefit of bringing Legolas into the story is the love triangle involved with Tauriel and Keeley. A lot of people were mad at Jackson for inventing his own character, but I really don't get that. Middle Earth is kind of a sausage party. There's only three women in Loader, so I have no problem with them bringing in an original character. She didn't really have much to do with Keeley in Desolation, but I was at least looking forward to what they were going to do with this plotline before I saw the Battle of the Five Armies. Then I saw the movie. Yeesh. When all is said and done, the romance plot is completely useless to the rest of the movie for two reasons. One, it fails to succeed as a romance. And two, it fails as a tool to explore Legolas's character. Failing as a romance. Keely and Tauriel's connection is never given enough time to develop out of the she's hot, love at first sight phase. Their first scene together is just him thinking she's attractive. Then later he hits on her with the worst pickup line ever. I could have anything down my trousers. Ew. I was surprised at how teeny weeny dwarves are. In subsequent scenes, Tauriel is confronted by both Legolas and Thranduil about her love life. First, Legolas is jealous, which makes sense. But then for some reason, Thranduil is opposed to her being with Legolas. Why? Shouldn't he be an obstacle to her loving a dwarf? I mean, why invent this whole lowly sylvan elf business? Do not think you would allow your son to pledge himself to a lowly sylvan elf. 
no, you're right. Why not have her as Legolas's presumptive fiance, but that she doesn't really want to marry Legolas and instead desires more freedom? Hence why Keely, being reckless, she thinks I'm reckless would be an attractive option for her. This would invest the audience in Tauriel and Keeley getting together while also making us feel bad for Legolas, who we like. As it is, your gut reaction is, oh, oh okay, then she can just be with Keeley, right? Then we get this scene, which it turns out is both their first and really their last conversation. First, they talk about Keeley's rune stone that his mother gave him as a reminder to go home. She thinks I'm reckless. Are you? So, okay, I guess now she's receptive to his advances. Then they go on talking about the stars and the sun and the moon and the winds and nature and bunny rabbits and whatever, and the music manipulates you into thinking they're falling in love. Seriously, play that song over any other scene and it'll feel like they're falling in love. I do. I want to play. I can see. You are very good at this. So, why don't we... For the rest of this movie and the next one, they have no actual screen time together. She saves him at the end of Desolation, but all they really do is look at each other. She tells him to lie still, and then he mumbles a bit about how she's beautiful. She walks in starlight in another world. And the scene ends before it's even a conversation. And then at the beginning of battle, the first time they get a chance to talk, they're saying goodbye. And then they don't see each other again until Keeley's death. She spends the entirety of the last movie doing fuck all with Legolas at gun to bat. And another thing, shouldn't Legolas be at least trying to get back with Tauriel? Instead, Legolas just kind of looks the other way with this whole thing. And Tauriel keeps dragging him into dangerous situations to help her save the man she says she actually loved. You knew I would come. Like, that's a little heartless, right? I mean, Jackson could have just knocked them both unconscious for two hours of screen time and had the same result. Okay, so when Tauriel finds out she's banished and no longer needs to follow Legolas, why doesn't she turn to him and say, Okay, I gotta level with you here. You're a really great guy, but I think we should just be friends. I'm sort of in love with that dwarf, so how about this? Since you're basically Batman, why don't you go to Gundabad alone to see what's up, and I'll go to Erebor to warn the dwarves about the possible danger, and also Mac on Keely a bit. Sound good? K. Okay, bye! Here's a question, why not bring Tauriel along into Erebor? Why not involve her in the main plot of the story instead of constantly relegating her to the sidelines? That way she could spend most of the third movie with Keely and we could see what their relationship dynamic would actually be like if they ended up together. Then we might actually feel something when he dies at the end. I mean where, in between all of this mess, is the audience supposed to get on board with this romance being real? All we've got is you're hot, I have a dick, stars are pretty, Stockholm Syndrome, and then it's I love you? You can't just assume I'm invested in these two getting together when they've been apart for longer than they ever were together. All they do is look at each other. Looking at each other, looking at each other, more looking at each other, and then they say cliched lines like You make me feel alive. And it just falls completely flat. I mean, until this point, all we know about Keeley is that he's a little immature and kind of a horn dog. and that Tauriel can't be with Legolas, but that she doesn't really want to be. So I mean, I guess there is at least some reason for them to be attracted to each other. Even though it's just physical for Keely and just kind of escapism for Tauriel, it is a reason, but the story doesn't allow that to grow. Honestly, the biggest obstacle to Keely and Tauriel getting together isn't Thranduil or Bolg or Legolas, but the plot. The plot just keeps barreling forward without them and completely fucks any chance for the audience to care about seeing them get together. So the real problem isn't that an original character is there, it's that she's not there enough. 2. Fails to explore Legolas as a character. So what's the end game to bring all this nonsense into the story? What's the purpose? Shouldn't the reason be to give us some kind of insight into what Legolas is like? You know, since he's the one the audience has known from the previous films? The time you see the third Hobbit movie is you'll see that, um, you'll see reasons for why Legolas is the way he is at the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring. Okay, sounds good. So since his only real characteristic in The Lord of the Rings is that he quarrels a bit with Gimli at the beginning, then logically the story should be about showing why he's racist against dwarves in the first place. But the problem with that is that the way Legolas is introduced leaves him no room to change. He's racist against dwarves right from the start. Goblin mutant. Benogoth? Maluvanwir. 
there's nowhere left for him to go. Now I get that elves are supposed to hate dwarves by default, but what about this? How about when they capture the dwarves in the forest, instead of Legolas sneering at them and making fun of Gloin's wee lad, what if he's the most accepting of the woodland elves? Like have some of the other elves who are being real racist assholes and Legolas tells them to knock it off. Prisoners should be treated with respect or whatever. Then over the course of the movie he loses the love of his life to a dwarf. Perhaps Tariel even dies at the end against Bull. This would actually give him some kind of motivation to take Bold down. And then he can also blame the death of Tauriel on Keeley and the dwarves in general. In this way, his character arc would come full circle. He starts as someone who isn't racist, develops hatred because of his great personal loss, and then in the original movies becomes accepting again through one unlikely friendship. Instead, Legolas just sort of wanders around in The Hobbit, shooting arrows at whatever the plot requires him to. He decides to leave the Woodland Realms at the end, but why? Tauriel had a fling with a dwarf for a couple of days, and now he's gonna wander the wilderness for 60 years? He's just gonna run away from his problems without once trying to see if he can work it out with Tauriel? <sighs> Over the course of two Hobbit movies, Legolas doesn't change at all, then makes a decision at the end that doesn't make sense to any of the preceding story, and comes off as so melancholy that he's unrecognizable from the happier elf seen in The Lord of the Rings. As it is, the entire love subplot is a complete misfire, on both an emotional level and on a story level. And given that this is really the only part of the movie where Jackson wasn't beholden to the source material, that's pretty disappointing. Thanks for watching everyone! Subscribe to the Sage Rants channel for more movie rants and so you don't miss the final part of the Hobbit review. But first, time for a little bonus stupidity. If anything moves on that mountain, kill it. Good thing elves apparently suck at following orders. Literally the next scene is Bilbo sneaking out of the mountain.